Several crews in Castaic are searching a landfill in an effort to find a woman who's been missing for more than a month. LAPD's Bruce Borihong says investigators will be at the landfill for the next several days looking for the body of Heidi Plank. And I can imagine that the investigators will be sifting through, you know, tons of trash that was brought here. Investigators say Plank was last seen on October 17th at an apartment complex in downtown L.A. They say evidence from the building has them thinking that something happened there that led to her death. A search warrant was served at the landfill yesterday by multiple agencies, including the LAPD and LA County Sheriff's Department. Blake Trolley, KFI News. And as I mentioned, Dodgers pitcher Max Scherzer and shortstop Corey Seager will be playing with other teams next season. Scherzer is going to the Mets, while Seager is off to the Rangers. When we come back, we'll talk with ABC's Aaron Katursky about day one oh, no, no, no. of the way Maxwell, the confidant of the late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Right now, they would say good morning to Nick Kelly Yossini, looking at a crash on the 110. Good morning, Jennifer. It's a mess for this morning, and lots of fun for us at South Island. South on side of the 110 at Avenue 60. If the crash is a two-right lane, shut down, and that's going to back things up for you as you can wait for my name. We've got an update on this or anything else going you down. Sound to 50 on the cell phone. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Checking your drive out of the Inland Empire. And as you make your way into the Orange County area, how are you seeing tonight? Every stretch is flowing for you overall. From as far back as Tyler, and that does remain the case as you make your way past Green River. Marina Valley, 215 North, still going for you right now from Alessandra, past the University of 60, towards UCR, and even seeing a few delays beyond towards the Riverside Interchange. Orange County itself looking pretty decent, although it looks like there was some Caltrans work along Beach Boulevard. Uh, north and south on between Capella and Chapman Avenue, it looks like uh, Lane have reopened, but definitely seeing a bit of traffic in the area. Okay, if I'm this guy, helps get to their faster. I'm just calling Okimi. 506 on your wake up call. Aaron Katursky, good morning to you. Boy, the prosecution did not hold back when it came to describing Ghislaine Maxwell as Jeffrey Epstein's partner in crime, made sure that they knew, hey, she was not his puppet, she was his accomplice. Tell us more about some of the hard hitting moments from yesterday. Yeah, the government's presentation, Jen, made clear that, that Ghislaine Maxwell knew exactly what was going to happen to the minor girls that she served up, in the words of the prosecutor, Laura Pomerantz, uh, to, to Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, the, the prosecutor said that the notion of a massage room was, was simply cover, and she described how Epstein and Maxwell would hang out at places where they could meet these uh -huh. underage girls and, and eventually uh, groom them for, for his abuse. Uh, and it was a constant supply that Epstein required that Maxwell procured eventually moving on from the guise of providing scholarships and being some kind of financial benefactor to uh, what the prosecutor called a pyramid scheme, where, you know, uh, you, we, we pay you, you bring me a girl, you bring me more, we pay you more. It was just uh, this nonstop 10-year scheme that prosecutors described. And the, the, the defense then said that Glenn Maxwell was being tried uh, because she's basically filling a chair uh, filling a hole, as the, uh, the defense attorney Bobby Sternheim said, uh, for, for Jeffrey Epstein, whose suicide made it impossible for him to ever be held to account. Was Glenn Maxwell in court yesterday, and if so, did she react in any way? How did she look? Oh, yeah. She was there, uh, and she cut a much more elegant figure than we've seen her since her arrest. She's always appeared in shackles and a blue smock. Uh, here, she was appearing uh, in civilian clothes, beige sweater, dark black heels, uh, and and no, no, no handcuffs. And, and, and while the mask made it impossible for her to, to, you know, gauge a facial expression, she was attentive. She took notes. She read notes and documents. She passed notes to her attorney. Conferred with her attorney. At times, seemed quite animated and involved in her defense. So um, she, she does seem to be engaged. And if, and it's a big if, she ever decides to testify. Uh, she could be a powerful witness for her own defense. How did you know that was going to be my next question? I know it's always a risk to put uh, the accused on the stand because you never know what they're going to say. At the same time, might it do the defense team good for her to be able to say all the things that she was, you know, they're going with the puppet thing, that, uh, that Jeffrey Epstein made her do and that was all under his, you know, uh, order and that really she didn't even realize what she was doing. It, might that make a jury more sympathetic or at least get that one juror to think, well, eh, maybe, maybe there's a chance? Well, beyond that, she can call the accusers liars. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, because the defense presentation said that, you know, the, the evidence wouldn't sustain the government's burden of beyond a reasonable doubt and there was financial incentives for the women 
and they, you know, they were manipulated, and, uh, and they have false memories, but none of that really undercuts the idea that Ghislaine Maxwell committed a crime. Only Ghislaine Maxwell, because there really are no eyewitnesses to, to what went on behind closed doors, only Ghislaine Maxwell could get up there and say, these people are lying, this didn't happen, that didn't happen, and, and as, as even prosecutors have described her as someone who was able to convince and normalize relationships with these women, she could well be a, a powerful figure in front of a jury. Um, but, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. The, the first witness on the stand was Epstein Pilot, who, who began to describe the lifestyles of the rich and famous and established Epstein and Maxwell as a couple. He'll continue for a bit today. And at some point this week, we expect uh, at least one of the accusers to take the stand. All right, Aaron, thank you so much for an update on everything. We're still watching it right along with you. Thank you, Jen. All right, see ya. That's ABC's Aaron Katursky. Ooh. I know just from a, a trial voyeuristic standpoint, I really hope she takes the stand. Just because I'm really intrigued how she's going to say, well, I, didn't, I didn't know. And these women are lying. We never did anything like that. Oh, I need to see that. All right, let's get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A man from Santa Ana has pleaded guilty to aiming a laser beam at an Orange County Sheriff's Department helicopter. Eric Suarez admits he was sitting in his car in April last year when he pointed a powerful laser beam at the chopper that blinded the pilot. He was convicted twice before for doing the same thing. Suarez is due to be sentenced next March. A man's been arrested in Lancaster for the alleged murders of his four kids and their grandmother. Deputies say the man walked in and said he'd done something bad. L.A. County Sheriff Lieutenant Brandon Dean says they got a 911 call Sunday night, and when deputies arrived at the home on Garnett Lane, they found the bodies of four kids under 12 years old and a woman in her 50s. Based on the evidence that we've received so far, uh, based on evidence that processed at the scene by investigators, coupled with interviews with not only the suspects, but the surviving mother of the individuals, we're pretty confident that we only have one suspect in this incident. Dean couldn't offer a motive, but a source with knowledge of the case says the father and mother were in the process of getting a divorce. Steve Gregory, KFI News. A plane has blown two tires while landing at LAX. The Air Canada jet landed just because the pilots thought it was leaking fuel. As they were coming in, though, the plane's landing gear didn't work. The jet came to a stop on the runway and had to be towed away. No one on board was hurt. A mayor in the Bay Area has changed course when it comes to fighting crime. Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf says she wants to reverse plan cuts to police funding and instead push to hire more officers as soon as possible. She made the announcement yesterday after another weekend of fatal shootings in her city. 127 homicides have been reported in Oakland so far this year. Schaaf says she will ask the city council to reverse the plan to divert $18 million to diversion efforts. Deborah Mark, KFI News. I don't know if you've been to Oakland lately. Scott works in downtown Oakland, so I'm there relatively frequently. It's a mess. It is a mess. When I heard that they were going to divert that money, I thought, Wait, what? It's, it's, you're not in a place where you can divert any money. If anything, you need to see if you can find more funding. That's probably a, a pretty smart move. Fishing will be allowed again along the Orange County coast where an oil spill has shut it down since early October. State officials say the closure of the fisheries will be lifted at noon today. Fishing between Huntington Beach and Dana Point has been banned since the October 2nd spill. The man accused of driving his SUV through a Christmas parade in Milwaukee has been charged with another count of homicide. Prosecutors say they added charges for that 8-year-old boy who died from his injuries related to the attack earlier this month. They say the man's also facing five charges of intentional homicide for other people who were killed. Each charge carries a mandatory life sentence. Prosecutors in Pennsylvania have asked the U.S. Supreme Court to review the ruling that overturned Bill Cosby's conviction for sex assault and freedom from prison. ABC's Derek Dennis says the court filing argues a dangerous precedent could be set by the overturned conviction. Cosby's lawyers have maintained the 84-year-old relied on a promise that he would never be charged when he gave damaging testimony in an accuser's civil suit in 2006. The admissions were later used against him in two criminal trials. Cosby's lawyers say he never should have been on trial. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Latvia for his talks with the country's leaders and a NATO um, minister's meeting. Blinken says security ties between the two countries are still as strong as ever. This cooperation is vital, and it remains vital in the face of uh, ongoing Russian actions in Ukraine. It's increasingly belligerent rhetoric, it's recent buildup of forces. Blinken says there are concerns about Russia's military buildup along the border with Ukraine. And gas prices across the country are going down. A little bit. 
So AAA says the national average now for a regular gallon of gas is $3.39, which is a penny down from the $3.40 yeah. average last week. It says prices are expected to stabilize over the next few weeks. Now, that's great. That's great that the national average is $3.40 because in California today, it is still four seventy one. dollars And uh, I was driving back from Thanksgiving. The cheapest gas that I saw was in San... I think it was San Anella. And that was four twenty nine a gallon. And then when I was at Scott's apartment in Walnut Creek in the Bay Area, we got gas at, at the, um, it was, I think it was a Chevron on Treat Boulevard, and I think it was five twenty nine a gallon. Five twenty nine. <sighs> yeah, that adds on to your cost of the holiday, right? When we come back, there may be a very simple reason why Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey stepped down, and it's all about the money. And we've heard a number of shortages right out there, but I haven't heard about this one. Have you heard about the maple syrup shortage? Yeah, I had no idea either. Canada has a plan to combat that. And what if we had the 12 days of Christmas today? If you had to go out and get all the items in the 12 days of Christmas, how much would it cost you in 2021? I've got those stories coming up in your biz bites in just a few minutes. Right now, who probably hears from drivers to tell him all about the gas prices all the time. <laughs> Nick Pagliokini is slow on the 91. Boy, that's the truth, Jen. It is always a top priority of oh, passing yeah. that to detail along. And then uh, also all the conditions on the roadways. Like a lot of calls this morning actually coming in about the fog that's along the coastal area. So definitely give yourself a little, a little extra time getting out the door this morning. As Jen said, checking out the drive for you and Riverside on the westbound side of the 91. Going to be a rough go of it for you from before Tyler. Almost as far back as Van Buren. And you're seeing a rough go through the, uh, well, say Santa Cannon getting into it anyway as you head toward Green River. It loosens up beyond that as you continue through your Belinda and Anaheim Hills all the way toward the 55. Now still seeing problems for you in the Highland Park area on the 110 South and Avenue 60. Got a fatality crash investigation. Two right lanes are shut down. That's going to be busy for you from as far back as Marmion and Way. Okay, if I and the Sky helps get you there faster, I'm at Pagliotini. This report is sponsored by the Cheesecake Factory. Now through December 31st, 2021, for every $50 gift card purchased at the CheesecakeFactory.com or at any of the Cheesecake Factory restaurants, you'll receive a $15 promo card, redeemable in the new year. Visit the CheesecakeFactory.com for more details. This is Chris Collinsworth. Here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network, presented by DraftKings. The Dodgers are losing big names to free agency. Max Scherzer agreed to a record-breaking deal with the Mets. Corey Seager is becoming a $300 million man with the Rangers. Lincoln Riley was introduced as the 18th football coach at USC. Riley said the Coliseum will be the mecca of college football. And Brian Kelly is leaving Ordain to become the new football coach at LSU. Kelly apologized to the team via text for not telling them before reports surfaced. I'm Missy Jordan. Download the DraftKings app and use code SPORTS to get a free shot and millions of dollars up for grabs this week with your first deposit. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply to DraftKings.com for details. If you own a business and manage to keep five or more people on the payroll through the pandemic, there's a new government program that will pay you tens of thousands of dollars per employee. And this is not a loan. This is a grant. The challenge is getting your hands on this money. This is a bureaucracy. InnovationRefunds.com cuts through the red tape, helps you get the cash. They do all of the legwork. They don't charge a penny until you receive the money. And what they do is simply share a percentage of the money they get for you. They got my business a six-figure refund. Now, their average client gets a quarter of a million dollars. That's impressive. Go to InnovationRefunds.com, click on the Qualify Me button, answer a few questions, InnovationRefunds.com, it's no risk, and it certainly is high reward. InnovationRefunds.com, they help me, I'm sure they can help you. InnovationRefunds.com. Dipped into the 70s last night, feels like winter's arrived in SoCal, better turn off that AC. And now, the top five reasons to visit Morocco. Number five. Gift a day giveaway. Get cookware, luggage, speakers, a different gift every day. Money
Monday through Friday until December 21st, when you earn 500 points on your rewards card. Number four, New Year's Eve white party. Bringing the New Year right, all dressed up in white. Book your room now. Three, Quick Black, live December 18th. Get your tickets today. And the number two, a wall of TVs at Sidelines, big screens at the gaming pit, and everywhere else you eat, stay, and play means you won't miss a play. And the number one reason, authentic Asian recipes aren't the only things that thrill at Moses. Check out our massive big screen there, too. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Morongo. Good time. I struggled with symptoms like frequent gas and stomach pain for years. I was bloated all the time with daily diarrhea. At first, I thought it was what I was eating. I kept thinking it was stomach issues. So I did my research and talked to my doctor, and we finally uncovered the truth. It, it was, was actually EPI. Exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI, is a condition where your pancreas is unable to help break down your food. It can lead to symptoms like diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, unexplained weight loss, and oily stool. And EPI symptoms can be confused with those of other common digestive conditions, like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, and celiac disease. So getting to the right diagnosis meant being more open with my doctor about the severity of my symptoms and how often they were happening. But there's good news. EPI is manageable, so don't wait any longer. Use the symptom checker at identifyepi.com and schedule a visit or call with your doctor to ask, Could I have EPI? Sponsored by AbD. Still loving those beautiful Solar Max technology panels, huh? Oh, you know it. Listen, I've been saving tons of money. The panels are going to keep these lights on all through the fall and winter. We're going to be using our appliances more during the holiday season. Now, you're using lots of energy. You can keep the lights on as much as you want. Run all the appliances, have all the computers, cell phones charged, because with Solar Max, your electricity is practically free. That's right. And Solar Max is right here in Southern California. they got the best products and best service. They do everything themselves. That means exceptional quality control and no middleman. Not only that, there are no upfront costs and they have the newest, most innovative Tesla products like those Tesla 420 panels and power walls. Yeah, check this out. You can pay zero down for the Tesla package and $79.96 per month with a 1.99% APR. Give them a call. It only makes too much sense. Call Solar Max, pound 250 from your cell phone and say that keyword Solar Max. Pound 250 keyword Solar Max by November 30th for this great offer. Monthly payment available on approved credit. See you number 972048. Tired of theft and vandalism at your commercial property? Proactively protect your business with advanced video security. At Bay Alarm, we keep our eyes on what you prize. Go to BayAlarm.com to get protected today. ACO 28 CCL 880138. Things are changing. We are past peak woke. We are past just let people steal, just let people defecate, urinate, and leave needles and destroy a beautiful city. Finally, in San Francisco, people are saying, I'm sick of living in the open sewer. John and Ken, because these people don't live like this in their private lives. We did it too. They didn't grow up like this. Like yet. On KFI. <laughs> Pastathon is here, and because of you, Chef Bruno's charity now provides over 25,000 meals to kids in need every single week across Southern California. Here's how you can help. Donate at Pastathon.com. That's easy. Shop into any Smart and Final store in California, Arizona, and Nevada. Donate 10 bucks or more at checkout, but just 10 bucks provides meals to 14 kids, courtesy of Barilla Pasta. And tonight... Join the Tim Conway Jr. Show for a live broadcast from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Anaheim White House. Stop by, watch the broadcast, donate on site, drop off pasta and sauce donations. It starts at 8 a.m. this morning that you can drop everything off. You don't even have to leave your car. They've got volunteers right there on site. And 100% of your donation goes to Katarina's Club to help kids right here in Southern California. So tonight you can go and watch Conway live at the Anaheim White House in Anaheim, and tomorrow morning, I hope you will join me. So go to Instagram right now, follow me if you don't already, JJLKFI, and the reason you would want to do this is because you will get to watch the live broadcast of Wake Up Call, and it won't just be me flapping my gums in front of the microphone, there will be light, there will be a camera, 
and there will be lots of action from people who will be guest appearing on this show. Someone who is on here every single day regularly, whom you know and love. Somebody who's on once a week with us, whom you know and love. And somebody who used to be on with us, who was an incredible fan favorite, joining us from the East Coast tomorrow morning, just because he says he wants to support Katarina's Club. So follow me on, on Instagram, that is. Instagram, JJLKFI. That's how you can follow the broadcast tomorrow morning. It's going to be a lot of fun. I am Jennifer Jones-Lee, and this is your wake-up call. Some of the stories we're watching in the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The L.A. City Council is due to vote on an ordinance to ban ghost guns in Los Angeles. A man from Santa Ana has pleaded guilty to aiming a laser beam at an Orange County Sheriff's Department helicopter. And as you've been hearing, Dodgers pitcher Max Scherzer and shortstop Corey Seager will be playing with other teams next season. Scherzer is going to the Mets. Seager is going to the Rangers. 5.35, we'll talk with Galen Druk from 5.38 Politics Podcast. Here's a question for you. Should President Biden or former President Trump make a run for office in 2024? Not even asking you so much who you think you would, who should win or would win, but for the sake of just both parties, should either man run for office? 538's done some polling, and I'll tell you what you voters think as of right now. Let's get into your biz bites brought to you by SoCal Gas. For more information, visit SoCalGas.com forward slash business rebate. So yesterday morning, Jack Dorsey, this former CEO of Twitter, came out and said, oh, I'm leaving Twitter because the company is ready to move on from its founders. And you thought, okay, well, the guy makes, I think he's worth like $12 billion, and $10 billion of that comes from his other company, Square. You know that little device that you whoop, run your credit card through if you're at a small business? Okay, he runs that as well. But here's the thing. Dorsey has been a longtime fan of Bitcoin. And a lot of people say, oh, you know what? Well, it sounds great that he's stepping down from Twitter because he wants it to grow and thinks that it would grow more without him. No, he might want to be leaning further into crypto. He's got a passion, he says, for the world's biggest cryptocurrency. I guess this was at a conference he attended or spoke at earlier this month. And he said he sees cryptocurrency as a foundational internet technology not controlled or influenced by any single individual or entity. And that's, that's kind of Dorsey's thing, right? He likes to decentralize power, especially on the Internet. And that's just been a, a big personal theme for him. He was, remember, he was one of the first people who advocated decentralizing the workplace. Twitter was one of the first companies that announced its option for employees to work from home indefinitely after COVID. So we'll see. So if all of a sudden Jack Dorsey somehow is a big investor or comes up with something new, you can see, hey, that lady on Wake Up Call, yeah, she knew that was coming. BMW says it is going to have a high-performance concept vehicle that is kind of an electrified crossover vehicle, and they want to start production on it late next year in South Carolina. It's going to be called the BMW XM. It'll be available exclusively as a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle under the company's M Performance division. Check this thing out. The concept car was unveiled yesterday. It's a, now remember, this is an electric vehicle with a V8 engine. It could have 750 horsepower and 737 pounds of torque. Okay, that would be amazing. In an electric vehicle? Once I drove an electric Fiat, it, it did not have 700 plus horsepower. I'm just, I'm just saying. Did you know that there was a supply shortage when it comes to maple syrup? In Canada, that is the case. So much so that the Quebec maple syrup producers have had to release nearly 50 million pounds from its strategic maple syrup reserve. And they said apparently it was because they had a bad season, a bad harvest season. They had a hot and short spring that led to lower yields. And I guess this uh, 50 million pounds is about half of its stockpile. So uh, anyway, and they said the pandemic actually kind of helped them when it came to selling more. That was good because people were cooking at home more and that sort of thing. So there was more demand for it. But then when spring comes along and shortens the supply that you have, that's not good. Finally, how much would all the gifts in the 12 days of Christmas 
you know, from the partridge in the pear tree on down. How much would all that cost in 2021? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index, after a bah humbug economic year in 2020, the cost of purchasing those 12 presents increased 5.7% from 2019 to a whopping $41,205.58. The largest price increases were for, were, were for exotic pets, specifically six geese laying. Those laying geese jumped 57%. The two turtle doves, those things even jumped 50%, and those three French hens jumped 40%. Higher food and labor expenses drove up the cost of raising birds. I mean, they factor all this in, right? Gold prices are also up, so that pushed the cost of the five golden rings 8.5% higher to $895 for those gold rings. And the most expensive items on the list, those seven swans of swimming, they cost a hefty $13,125, not the same as 2019. Live performances are back, and so are the nine ladies dancing. Their price is also held to $7,552.84. But prepare to pay more, it says, for the 11 pipers piping and 12 drummers drumming. And those feeling extremely extravagant this year will have to fork over an extra $179,454 to purchase the gifts for each time they are mentioned in the song. Oh, and by the way, anyone who shops online for the 12 Days of Christmas gift will have to fork over an additional $4,394 because of travel and shipping costs. Just in case somebody weird in your household said, I would love the 12 Days of Christmas for Christmas this year. You can tell them to go pound sand. Not happening, way too expensive. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk with Galen Drew from the 538 Politics Podcast with this question, should President Biden or former President Trump make a run for 2024? Not even specifically who you think would win, but is either man good for their respective parties? We'll find out in just a second. Right now, let's go back to that crash on the 110. As you make way through the Highlands Park area on the southbound side of Avenue 60, it's a fatality crash investigation. Two right lanes are shut down. Knock on wood, not too bad of a drive. It will be heavy for you from Marmion Way as you make way toward Avenue 60 and then loosens up for your drive for the southbound on the 110. Continuing through the Lincoln Heights and the Lincoln Park area around the 5 and not seeing anything major getting into downtown LA, actually even through it. 101 North, a little sluggish for you through downtown LA from 1st, passing the 10 San Bernardino Freeway and stretches toward the 110 and also seeing a busy drive start now for you on the 5 northbound, getting out of Norwalk instead of a spring from before the 605, it's going to be passing delays for you as you make way into Commerce toward about Swanson. Loosens up for the most part and then heavy again for you out of Commerce in East LA off the 710 5 northbound as you make way towards the 101. KFI in the sky helps get to there faster. I'm Natalia Okini. Medicare annual enrollment is now here. It's open. And whether you're about to sign up for Medicare or you're already on a plan, navigating Medicare can be overwhelming. So let me suggest calling AGAMedicareOptions.com. Their agents will advise you step-by-step step on a plan that fits your unique situation and budget. All the agents are local. They live and work right here in Southern California. You get any agent assigned to you who will compare most of the major plans at once at no cost to you. Plans that are accepted by your physician, cover your medications at the lowest out-of-pocket cost, and changes occur every single year. So set up a benefit review to ensure you're still on the best plan or you will be, and it's free. Call pound 250 on your cell and say the keyword my Medicare. Pound 250 on the cell and simply say my Medicare or visit agamedicareoptions.com. That's agamedicareoptions.com. SoCal weather from KFI, mostly sunny today with highs mid to upper 60s at the beaches, mid 70s to low 80s for Metro LA and OC, low to mid 80s for the valleys and the IE, just a couple of degrees cooler tomorrow. We leave local, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee. Every year our team provides food and toys for less fortunate families. Hello, my name is John O'Quinn, owner of Ruta Hill Plumbing. I remember one Christmas when my dad didn't have any work and we didn't have any money. I can still recall the look of shame on his face when my brother and I only had one present to open. I was a brat and said something I shouldn't have. To this day, I am still sorry for what I said to my dad. I was selfish and I wish I could take it all back. 
So I know what it's like for some families. At Ruder Hero Coming, we want to make Christmas special. So all this month, we are donating a portion of every plumbing and drinking service we do to families in need. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from our family to yours. Thank you. CO 102-8886. Now through December 31st, 2021, for every $50 gift card purchased at thecheesecakefactory.com or at any of the Cheesecake Factory restaurants, you'll receive a $15 promo card, redeemable in the new year. Visit thecheesecakefactory.com for more details. You know you worked hard to build your wealth. You also know one must plan for the twists and turns ahead. The children growing up, empty nest realities, and the joys of retirement. There's something else you need to know. You're not alone in this. You have a wealth management partner in Edelman Financial Engines to work with you every step of the way. Whether it's personalized advice or our modeling of over 38,000 investments monthly to keep you current and focused. It also helps to know that we use a cost-effective, integrated approach to wealth planning. From tax-optimized portfolios to life-focused advice for retirement and the possibilities ahead. If you're asking... What more can I do to take my wealth potential to the next level? Call to schedule a free, no-obligation meeting with an Edelman Financial Engines advisor who knows what that takes. Call 833-PLAN-EFE or visit planefe.com today. Keep your home sanitized with Coit Services. Save up to 30%. Visit Coit.com. The KFI Postathon is happening right now. Head into any smart final in California, Arizona, or Nevada to donate. Or go to Postathon.com. KFI AM640. More stimulating talk. AM640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Welcome to a Tuesday morning. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee. Some of the stories we're watching in the KFI 24 hour newsroom. Scientists in South Africa who discovered the new COVID 19 variant Omicron say they're having trouble tracking the strain because of travel bans other countries are imposing. Doctors say its high numbers of variants could make it more transmissible. LA started enforcing that mandate, which requires businesses to verify customers are vaccinated against COVID 19. The man accused of driving his SUV through a Christmas parade in Milwaukee has been charged with another count of homicide. This one's for the eight-year-old boy who died from injuries related to the attack earlier this month. And prosecutors in Pennsylvania have asked the U.S. Supreme Court to review the ruling that overturned Bill Cosby's conviction for sex assault and freed him from prison. News is brought to you by OPO Law. Let's say good morning now to the producer and anchor of 538.com politics podcast, Galen Drew. Galen, welcome back to Wake Up Call. Thanks for having me. So here's the question that you guys did in your poll. Should President Biden or former President Trump make a run for 2024? I'm excited to hear what people had to say. So we didn't actually poll this. The pollsters have been asking Americans whether they want the current president and former president to rematch in 2024. And the majority of Americans say they don't want either Biden or Trump to run for president in 2024, between 60 and 70 percent, depending on whether you're asking about Biden or Trump. But of course, that's not how these processes work. It's not all Americans together who vote on the two candidates that run. It's Democrats choose their candidate and Republicans choose their candidate. And so if you ask Democratic voters, a majority, you know, want Biden to run for re-election, 60-some percent say that. And if you ask Republican voters, likewise, a majority want Trump to run for election in 2024, somewhere between, you know, 60 and 80 percent, depending on the poll. But, you know, it's very early days still. And that may be an indication more of just support within the party for those figures than a, than a true desire that that person runs for re-election or election in Trump's case. We will get a better understanding of, you know, the support for another bid for president once people actually know what the field looks like. People know what the actual alternatives are. Right now, people are answering that question somewhat in a vacuum. Yeah, and that makes sense because right now, all you want is for your party to win so whoever's name is at the top of that ticket, sure, you're probably going to vote for that person. I think what's interesting, though, is, the, you know, you do have people, though, saying uh, neither of these men would be their first choice. 
and they probably are looking forward to seeing what the field may hold. And I think for a lot of voters, um, both President Biden and former President Trump in many ways are seen as divisive to either side. And maybe they're going to look to somebody who's a little bit more in the middle for once. Uh, that's possible. I mean, another aspect here is that President Biden was the oldest president to be inaugurated to a first term. And he took that record from former President Trump, who was, when he was nominated, when he was inaugurated, the you know, oldest president to be inaugurated to a first term. And so we're looking at a situation where Trump is currently 75, Biden is currently 79. Uh, and people have to, you know, people will make up their own minds about how old they want their president to be and the capabilities of each of those men. Um, but, you know, we don't obviously have a cap on how, old, how young you have to be uh, in order to run for president, so voters will make up their own minds on that. But it's important to remember that when Biden ran for election the first time, <clears throat> you know, in, in 2019 when he was running his primary campaign, you know, he too floated the idea that he might just be a one-term president, and he's also called himself a transitional figure. So I think there has been an open question for a while in the Democratic Party about whether or not Biden will run for re-election. Republicans are facing a unique circumstance. Oftentimes, presidents win re-election, and so it's not often that you have a one-term president who's still kind of in the fray, using their political capital, and talking about running for election. I wondered, too, didn't Jen Psaki, the White House spokesperson, didn't she say that Biden was planning on a 2024 run? Absolutely. In so, yeah. Biden has said that he intends on running in 2024, and for all intents and purposes, the Trump team seems to be suggesting that he is also running in 2024. But it's important to understand the motivations behind those states, right? If Joe Biden were to say today that he's not running for president in 2024, he would immediately become a lame duck president. And so, you know, he may well run in 2024. I have no idea what his actual intentions are, and the party will, he, will, he and the party will decide what they want. But whether or not either of those two men run in 2024, they're going to want to say that that's their intention because that's how they hold, that's how they keep their power and influence that they currently have. Likewise, if Trump were to say today, I'm not running for president in 2024, the Republican Party could basically, you know, to some extent disregard him and look for a new standard there. And so in order to keep that power, to keep that sway, you have to, you have to basically stay in the mix and keep the, the possibility alive. Um, ultimately, I, I have no idea whether or not either of those two candidates will run. Yeah, and you, you make some great points about why keeping their names at the forefront is good for the party. At least you've got sort of uh, bookends, I guess, if you will, on both sides, and you can say, okay, let's just keep these here until we have a reason to move them. Talking about, though, other people who might join the field, are we, uh, I know we've, there have been rumors of Kamala Harris maybe stepping forward, and, you know, it's not uncommon for a vice president to run. Uh, is that a possibility for the Democratic Party, and, and who else, who else name, uh, else's name have you heard thrown about? Yeah, so I, I would say, first of all, it, it's early. Um, obviously, we're talking about 2024, but it's not that early, because in reality, the primary process begins at the beginning of 2023, as soon as the midterms are over. And so people are already thinking about whether or not they're going to run for president in 2024 and making decisions based on that information. Now, on the Democratic side, I think the, the, the most obvious contenders would be people from the slate of 20, the 26 candidates that ran in 2020. So, you know, there's Kamala Harris, there's Keith Buttigieg, there's Amy Klobuchar. There are new people like Governor Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of uh, Michigan. And so, you know, those, those are options. The bench is probably somewhat similar to what it looks like in 2020, but there may also well be newcomers if, again, the, there's an open field. Now, usually when presidents run for re-election, they don't face sincere challenges because there are advantages to running as an incumbent. Voters see you as the president and um, they kind of see that you're already doing the job and so maybe are more inclined to vote for you to continue doing the job for continuity's sake. On the Republican side, there are also, you know, plenty of options. Uh, it hasn't been since, you know, 2015, 2016 that they've had a competitive uh, presidential primary, but I think people like Governor DeSantis, the governor of Florida, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, 
Kristen Noem, the governor of North Dakota, uh, South Dakota, is kind of high up on that list. And so I think uh, I, I think I do feel for that. All right. Thank you so much, Galen. It's always fun to talk politics. Absolutely. Take care. All right. See you later. That is Galen Drew, the anchor producer of the 538 Politics Podcast. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about today? If you were able to vote for somebody today, would you vote for a former President Trump or a former president, or uh, I mean a current President Biden, or do you want somebody completely different? And is there anybody out there who can break the loggerheads between parties? Where, you know, I don't care if it was Willy Wonka who was the president. Are the parties going to remain so divided that they don't care that he says, hey, you can come into my chocolate factory if you guys will disagree. And they're like, I don't want all those calories. We're not coming in. Is there anybody who has that golden ticket that would make those two sides come together? And I don't, I don't know. I would love to say yes, but... <laughs> With the way things are right now, I just, I don't know.